to round one, and we've got ourselves Lemon and God Pukas to start off this show. Yeah, so it's going to be a, a battle of the swords. It's going to be uh, God Pukas rocking with the Beyblades, and then Lemon rocking with the Corrin here. So, you know, we got some we got some action ahead of us right now. Yes, yeah, starting off on Town and City, Corrin is a, a bit of a unique pick. Not often seen uh, for the uh, just, just the most the least popular Fire Emblem, but you know, with with their general generally solid aerials and a bunch of uh, pretty unique uh, strands of uh, singular combos, they can certainly hold their own against uh, both Pyra and Mithra, whether it be the speed or the power on on deck. Absolutely, but right now it looks like God Pukas is um, taking a bit of a lead. Lemon bringing back uh, with a cute little combo, a uh, cute little string there. And, you know, right as I mentioned uh, who's on top, the, the lead shifts. And it's going to be about who can seal the deal on this first stock first. Yeah, oftentimes Sorties, and especially Pyra and Mithra, the Aegis duo, uh, they can... They can snowball super quickly, whether it be with just raw damage or the amount of floodgating that Mithra provides. But, oh, still living that smash. I thought that was going to be the the name of the game. And Foresight comes in clutch already. God Pook is already showing off why this character is a little bit DLC, but some Smash 4 DLC with that pin showing its ugly head once again, depending on how much you like Corrin, I guess. Hey man, sometimes you uh, jump into attacks and sometimes you die for it. But um, right now, it still looks like both these guys are slightly evenly matched. The combo game going out from God Pukas, he's um, definitely really, really working with that Mithra a lot. Um, Mithra is a character that can zone break really well, uh, disengage really well, and on top of that, they extend their combos in very interesting and creative ways for the most part. Uh, and then whenever they're at a high percent, you just switch the Pyra to, to seal the deal on these stocks with an exclamation mark. Yeah, it's a little bit early, I feel like, to switch the Pyra, uh, oftentimes trying to play uh, trying to play for a long time with Pyra can start leading, uh, letting leads get reduced rather quickly, but Korn isn't one to na natively take advantage of an opposing uh, character's lack of speed. They're, they themselves aren't really all that fast, and it's going to be disjoint versus disjoint against them, and Pyra's... But Pyre's got that range and that extra kill power, so it feels like Korn is going to be at a little bit of a disadvantage as long as the Lemon doesn't keep this uh, advantage going. Yeah, just enough magnet hands, but these, roll, uh, these down smashes to cover roll-ins have been really clutch. Oh, yikes. But no tech at the ledge right there off of the uh, side B. Uh, but here we go, we got some shield pressure. Oh my god, did they just foresight out of that? Hey, this hey, character is you... awesome. <laughs> Alright, but a side B to answer right back. Um, and no percent on either of these guys. It's gonna probably come down to who gets their uh, better combo going first, uh, and you know, just working around the others' disjoints with your own to you know get get some good spacing going on, starting their your own combos. That's gonna be what's important here. And I mean, what a better way to start a combo than just with a get out of jail free card, but. Man, God Pukas has been holding in for better and for worse. All of these tech roll ins have been scouted out by Lemon, and now you're stuck and don't have Mithra on deck, so you can't rely on that foresight to get you out. Still, Pyra makes up these damage uh, rather quickly, not trying to commit too much. Ooh. This will yeah. be an important juggle, but sh all right, God Pukas lets him down and says just trying to play that solid, steady game. Don't want to try and overcommit too much. Let him back, reset. It's uh, <laughs> Satsuki, I guess. Lemon uh, manages to find their way on. And the holding shield again. Is that going to do it? No, not quite yet. Looking for the backer, though. Oh, and the upbeat. Huh? Not too, not too tall, too it. tall. Too yeah, the tall. ceiling's too... Uh-oh. Yeah, this forward air to punish that. Um, putting up the shield just in time to also avoid the rest of the uh, starting hitbox from the smash attack startup. Uh-oh, they got one in Man. there. I think it's locked in really well, too. Yeah, just hold that. Yeah. Oh. Jumped out of shield, and uh, the punish was all there. Great job from Lemon. Um, you know, staying clutch in that last hit situation, and just you know, sinking in that smash attack startup. Really, really good stuff there. You know, there was nothing, no shield SCI that um, God Pukas could do here in order to get out of that one. I don't know about you guys, but. 
that was far more than 11 hits, which that's the magic number when it comes to uh, individual hits on your block. If it goes more than 11, then your roll has frame one invincibility. So they could have rolled away uh, or rolled in and because, I mean, Corn F smash is rather long, but rolled in and gotten completely out of that situation. But it looked like God Pook is just is really unfamiliar with what Corin can do and the added X factor uh, or uh, added good things about Corin because they were holding shield far too much and Lemon took that as a free chance to come in and hold that chainsaw on block and see what they do about it, which was nothing. <laughs> so God Pukas goes down game one and Sasuke's looking to keep this momentum going and keep this uh, set on a 2-0 on a track. Yeah, and already getting to work on this uh, start of the second game, a Forsyth gonna be breaking them out of the um, F Smash on Shield. And I think going forward, they have to realize that doing that to Mithra is no-go, but if you do it to Pyra, that is, um, especially if you lock it in, that's gonna be a pretty guaranteed um, F Smash and a ton of Shield pressure as well. Ooh, that was a potential much bigger combo, but God Pukas in general has just been playing for a lot more of these single hits. Seem seemingly a lot more comfortable with the Pyra as opposed to Mithra just missing it, uh, her back nair. And yeah, yeah back up, which we go. It's just one hit, one, one hit wonders, but it swings through. And it uh, looks like God Pukas will have that first stop on deck. Man, uh, uh, even. <laughs> gets immediately evened up it, regardless of who takes the stock first or who takes this, the stock at all immediately evened up and it's really mat it's a matter of like individual capitalization far more than simply uh holding uh taking the stock first because leads don't last long in this <laughs> it seems against these two players no you're you're just a combo away from being in it or out of it um and yep right now lemon going to work with a couple whip punishes into about 40%, uh, making this a little bit more of an even game. Here's the thing, though, the double parry. The, um, that was so no, unnecessary, but he got it. <laughs> hey, it looks flashy, and uh, definitely not something you want to be seeing if you're Lemon. But, yeah, yeah, this guy's just going tit for tat, you know, keeping the, the disjoints flying and making sure that um, both opponents are going to be respecting each other in this one. Yeah, just some solid frame traps. Like this is what you kind of see, sorty on sorty. But if there's a, this is a thing that either character doesn't want to see. It's when you start pairing. Mithra is a whole lot more immune to that because I mean, just look at that frame data. Like I could read it off to you if you want, but that, that, uh, that's a that, that would be a very very long list. So. When it comes to speed, trust your eyes on this one. That character <laughs> is fast and it is really safe on with a lot of different options. Yeah, whether it be light or lightning, they're moving like a, <laughs> they're moving like it. That's for sure. But yeah, nice catch wide up, up there. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, that move kills pretty early too. Um, Doesn't and, sound like uh, it should, but definitely does. No, absolutely. I mean, that was a, that was a really low uh, up air, and it, it ultimately killed off the top too. Oh, but there you go. You got the the dunk to up smash, and now Lemon is feeling the pain. Yeah, this is starting to get out of hand really quick, and you never want to see Pyra with a massive lead because then they don't have to worry about their lack of speed. They can just use their range and their ob obnoxious amount of killing tools. F2 will kill, Fair will kill. Like, what? Yeah, there it <laughs> All goes. Of it. And uh, it's one apiece, gonna be going back to Lemon's counter pick, so uh, it's a little bit of an advantage they have for going up game one. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure what kind of stages uh, I would like to see from the Corrin that also wouldn't benefit the Aegis in a big way. So, uh, yeah, pretty volatile matchup. You know, both these guys just have to be slinging out disjoints. Someone's going to work more than the others. Um, and it's just going to come down to persistence and spacing at the end of the day. I, I paused it a little bit too early, but I feel like this is a key, key range that we're going to see here. Because Corrin, <laughs> Corrin F2 goes just just quite not as far as uh pyra's f tilt slash forward air like this minuscule amount of difference is gonna change this game three because whether it it'll dictate whether or not god pukas can just keep players out or uh, or keep lemon out or if lemon uh, 
finds ways to extend and choose options that covers that distance. Battlefield's a really great pick here, not only big, uh, for Corrin's ability to cover platforms, but by keeping it a lot more close quarters, you're enticing a god Pukas to stay Mithra, which means your sword will actually outrange hers if you can handle her speed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Pirate Sword is definitely way bigger um, than Corrin's and Mithra's by extension, but um, Corrin's is still bigger than Mithra's. And yeah, if you catch him with um, movement options like that, it's going to be really good to get up that damage uh, in the early minutes of this match. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is starting off basically the same, so both players trying to feel each other out, like not not too many adjustments needed to be made. After all, both players did win a game apiece, so it's gonna be on Lemon's uh -oh. again. Okay, yeah. When he sees it, he goes in for the kill. Anytime he's going, anytime God Pukas is pulled up block, they said no. I'm not gonna try and grab you. I'm just gonna make sure you feel the pressure of this chainsaw. But now God Pukas is really holding center stage, not trying to give. I'm not trying to give Lemon what he wants, and instead take what is his. Yeah, and then the insta switching right back to Mithra. Um, going to be going for a couple combos and really disallowing uh, Lemon to get any significant damage off because of that foresight. Uh oh. Yeah. See, there it is. You're not, <laughs> not going to be able to. No shield pressure uh, or pressure in general when uh, your character can just avoid combos. <laughs> so unfortunate, because that was such a good tech chase. I know. And then, uh, and now corn pin doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but that F tail is going to be killing rather early. 133 uh, from near center. Um, okay, so, you know, not out of this just yet. All it's going to take is is a couple exchanges going into Lemon's favor uh, to put them back on top. There you go. That's a good opening. Only a pin to, to really show for it, though. This is where you really want to see corn start to put on a put on damage or at the very least start a juggle but a pin is usually a finisher not a starter and lemon's really feeling that loss of loss of an opening as the lead only seems to widen yeah well look contrary to um what it might look like the defensive oh, play is gonna start no no actually a little bit too far of a roll god Pukas wasn't ready for it um they're probably expecting just neutral get up okay but a good answer with that uppy all right, gonna get a little bit more of a punish on that one. I think the more defensive Lemon plays as the set goes on uh, and, and comes to a close is gonna be indicative of who comes out on top, but making aggressive options like that pin uh, onto the stage will go punished at some point. Yeah, these pins have just really not been working out, uh, especially against, well, against both of them, whether it be Foresight or, or uh, the Blazing Edge, just things have always been in the way of lemon's uh, lemon's pin which seems to really take a toll on their neutral yeah again just getting stuffed out of pin it's a move they really want to do but it's one that got is, is at the very least if they're not prepared for corn they're absolutely prepared for pin big swing big miss though losing against losing again a huge chance and it gives a gives a moment of reprieve for lemon and they capitalize on it for sure 72 now they've certainly got plenty of means to come back but you need you need a really good starter here you need one of these falling nares or the falling up airs like down you tilt. can't settle for down tilt yeah you need like a a starter that links it to two three four hits not just you can't oh, play tip for tat anymore two it's solid 20 percent but uh oh yeah that was a that was a laggy option you chose to land but um, I definitely admire the boldness right now from Lemon. Lemon looking to bring this back, getting the damage rolling a little bit. Um, it's just going to take one bold, crazy option, though, to finish this one up for God Pukas. Um, getting stage back, and you know this, Lemon has a hard time getting out the corner. Back in center, the uh, forward air is going to trade, and a little bit more damage going to be put on to Lemon. Oh, jumping yeah, into that nair. Yeah, bad DI, and... Uh, God, Pukas is going to be going up two to one, taking the set into their favor. Switching to Mithra just for the added effect, but I mean, that's kind of the the ability of Pirate in so many ways. Like when you're at 133, you're walking on eggshells. And despite the well-played nature from Lemon in that final stock, like playing, trying at least to play a lot more conservative, look for uh, bigger punishes and not give up an inch, 
yeah. Tyrant only needs one hit, and falling there is a rather safe one to just go for, especially out of hit stun. Just throw it out, yeah. see if it works. Shoutouts yeah, to all those pins that were missed, but yeah, I'm it's a break. It, it sucks. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, uh, the offstage pressure, or like, you know, the pressure for Lemon to get back to center was a little bit too strong. They started at the end of their stocks making really aggressive approaches. Like you see right there, you see that pin. Um, and later on in their last stock, they started double rolling. They started rolling from ledge and then rolling back to center in order to try to get, you know, that center covered. And all it took was for um, a risky jump into that nair in the last second of the match. You're going to see it right here. Roll from ledge, roll center, jump. Yep. And uh, God Pugas had that really well scouted and uh, it was over. That, that, that was it. When they're panicked, they move. And that's kind of a case for a lot of characters, a lot of players in this game. Yeah. You're just like, hey, I'm trying to get out of situations. One of my best movement tools oftentimes being things like roll and jump, which are commonly used. But, you know, 